just love animation. I lived on animation as a kid. It's a process that I that I really really enjoy. There's only two places you can write this kind of these kind of songs, either for the Broadway stage or for an animated musical. One of the ways that <clears throat> that you propose to a lady penguin, according to the pebble and the penguin, is that the kind of nest that they make are, are made of pebbles. And so instead of giving a, a, a lady penguin a ring, you give her a particularly beautiful pebble. You give the girl the pebble. You like it? I love it. Hubie is a, a helpless romantic fool, but Martin brought this whole dimension of, of, of wit and ingenuity to him that, that, that hadn't existed beforehand. Hey, Rocco. Don't you want me to come along? You want me to spring you out of this joint so you can go home to Miss Wonderful? Rocco is wonderful. Um, it's Jim Belushi. Simply being Jim Belushi, the character was designed around Jim Belushi's voice. It has all his, his characteristics. He's strong, he's fun, he's wacky. It's just a tremendous performance and really you know, lifts the film. I didn't know what the character was really going to look like. And so it was great to be able to dictate the movement and the look of the character by just the voice. And the artist uh, kind of took the lead from me, which was, uh, which was nice. I felt like the conductor. I'm going to fly, and no one's going to stop me. I'm flying. Flap him, flap him, flap him. Whoa! Hubie is uh, a very sympathetic character. You warmed him. He's a little bit shy. He has dreams and aspirations, but. Um, like many people, he's afraid to, to grasp for it. One day, he, he just swam up to her and said, Hello, Marina, I'm Hubie, and I think you're fabulous. But he's, he's not a weedy uh, character. He, he, has, he, he has strength underneath. Rocco is far more bullshit, uh, a little bit arrogant. He had any guts. He never would have let them take him alive. But on the same hand, you can see towards the end of the picture that there is a warmer side to him. It's layers, you know, uh, the building of, of a project like this. So it starts with your words and your character, and then they build on that, and then they ask you to change your character. I dream about her night and day. I see her face when I close my eyes. Every good film starts with a script. You, when you've got your story down uh, and you decided who the characters sound like, you then record those characters and cut a radio track of the script. Essentially, it's like a radio show. Come on, let me come along! From that, the storyboard artist will take that, create the panels of each sequence and each scene from which the animators take their cue. Where do we dock? That's what I'm asking. Where do we dock? This is a key drawing. Yeah, I'm, I'm roughing out the key poses. I'm trying to give a performance. And I do every um, eighth frame, I do, do a drawing. And I will do drawing 25, in this case, 27, and the in-between it will do 26. The funniest part can often be when you shoot live-action reference for an animated feature film, because more often than not, the characters are um, animals. So people, you have to find actors who are capable not only of expressing the wide range of emotions that appear in, in the story itself, but also the movements of, uh, in this case, penguins. So um, it was quite hilarious. I do get into it in a big way, yeah. Our children will be the strongest, the smartest, the bravest, not to mention the best looking. So we didn't actually go to the, the uh, length of getting them to dress up in penguin suits, but they, um, some of the movements, some of the stiff arm movements, that kind of thing, were incorporated in, into the live action shooting. It's just uh, an inspiration. You listen to the voice and you can pick up on some nuances of the voice. I've played uh, Heads of Lettuce, tomatoes, uh, bacon. Uh, so Penguin was really easy for me to slip into. We tried several very luminous people for the, the part of Rocco. And it, uh, when James Belushi walked in that door, opened his mouth, it was obvious. It was always him anyway. Uh, I'm Rocco. I'm the, uh... oh. <laughs> what was that? Did he hit a rock? Did he hit a penguin? You hit a penguin! Quite often, I think, the uh, artists um, use elements of your face for the, for the character. 
particularly in, in uh, I've done several animation films now, and um, particularly for the for singing parts, they often come in and videotape you while you're singing it so that they um, <laughs> get the hateful physical, you know, facial expressions right. Um, and I think um, I think it depends really whether the, whether the whether whoever is drawing the character is, is any kind of fan or not, actually. <laughs> I suggest you would do best to beg. You often see people going through the most extraordinary contortions because they want to get the sound of, particularly if you're doing fight scenes and stuff, you really have to get that exertion into your voice. Everything has to be in your voice, which is, which is, a, which is really um, exciting and fun to do. Hubie! At this point now, the film is nearly nearing completion. The, all the animation has been done, all the characters have been painted, and the film itself runs in, in the continuity that we've finally decided. We've recorded an orchestra to the picture, so all the music is there. At this point, we're taking all the music, all the dialogue, which we started off with uh, on the radio track, and all the sound effects and everything that the, all the various sound effects artists have recorded for us. And we're mixing those together here at the final dub. <laughs> Sounds good. Sound is 50% of the film that you see on the screen. It can change your emulsions of the film. You, you can make an audience react certain different directions with certain sound effects. Plus music adds the, the emotion end of it. It's very important. I mean, uh, just turn it off and see how it works for you. <laughs> Greg and I had already put together the dialogue tracks and the sound effects tracks, and we're now we're adding the music to the final scene. So what I was doing was balancing the band against the existing mix of dialogue and effects, and then adding the vocals and the vocal echoes around the, uh, the mix. And then within the song, where we had balanced dialogue and sound effects previous to the, hearing the music, once we heard the music, I was maybe pulling back some of the ambience of the winds that, pop out. that affected you know, the music, the string section and stuff like that, where we would tuck that back and let the string section take that feeling instead of a wind track or vice versa. You mean you let me? A little. You mean it? Don't push it. This really is a huge team effort. Um, we have nearly 250 animators back in Ireland. Um, we have a number of people in other parts of the world helping us too. It's a, it's a tremendous team effort. This film has something for everybody, um, from people four right through to 80. It's great music, great action, it's tremendous fun, lots of humour, a touch of love, a touch of sadness, everything anybody could want in a film, all in one. It's great family entertainment. It's not the pebble, it's the penguin. I love doing it, so I, I hope that people will, will love seeing it.